Hey everybody, I am back with another video for you all. Today is going to be a manga probe video. I just wanted to go over my top five manga that I read in 2014 that I actually own. I have a lot of stuff that I read online, but I felt like it would be better to go over the ones that I own in person. Also, I just want to mention I am outside, mostly because there's somebody still home and I make a lot of noise when I do videos and I really, really wanted to record today so, also the camera is sitting on my knees, so if you see it shake a little bit, it's because I'm moving a lot, so. Coming in number five is Nisekoi by Naoshikomi. This is a really funny comedy romance about a boy in search of a childhood sweetheart. When they were really young, they made a promise that when they got older, they would get married. He still carries a locket that has a key that opens it that the girl possibly has, so that's kind of his clue into figuring out who it is. Of course, there's the whole thing that he's grown up and he's not sure that he's still in love with this person that he fell in love with as a child. And also he's developed feelings for a new girl, obviously, since he's gotten older. This is also the manga that we chose to read in the Booktube Manga Club. I will leave a link down below for the thread if you want to come and join us. Please do. There are seven volumes out right now and uh, up until just today, I only had the first four and then I went ahead and bought the rest of them because I wanted to own them anyways, and since it is the read of the month, I decided now is a good time. Number four is a more recent read for me, and that is The Heroic Legend of Arslan, which the story is by Yoshiki Tanaka, and the art is by Hiromu Arakawa. If you don't know, Hiromu Arakawa is the author of Fullmetal Alchemist, my favorite manga. This is a really epic historic fiction about a boy named Arslan, who is the prince and heir to a, a mighty kingdom, Unfortunately, they are in warring times, and during a battle between them and another country, they lose, but Arslan manages to escape with one or two other companions, and now it is his destiny to find companions to help him retake his country back. Really, really awesome. There's only two volumes of this out right now, um, and I think online you can even only find up to like chapters 19, maybe even 20s out by now, because I haven't checked it in a while amazing story. Really, really love this. I'm really into military historic fiction right now, so that could be why I'm really, really obsessing over this. But yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, go and check it out. Coming in at number three is Monster by Naoki Urasawa. This is the first Urasawa manga that I've read, and it is not the last. I'm kind of obsessed with his art style and his works. I have about three other manga by him, but this one's still my favorite, and it's probably because it was the first one that I read. This story is about a Japanese doctor living in German who is a famous neurosurgeon. He saves the life of a young boy who got shot in the head, only later to find that he becomes a serial killer when he grows up. The doctor feels not only obligated to go after him because he's the one that initially saved the boy's life, but he's actually kind of getting mixed up with some of the murders and getting blamed for some of the things going on. So he takes it upon himself to go after this boy. And it's an amazing story. You should go check it out. I couldn't decide between my number one and number two. It was really, really hard. They kept swapping and they kept switching. Um, but I decided to finally go ahead and stick with this order. So coming in at number two is Attack on Titan by Hajime Isayama. This is such an amazing story, and I'm sure you guys have heard of Attack on Titan, but it is basically about the world has been pushed to living behind these series of three walls by these giant, colossal, man-eating things called titans that try to get into the wall. The story is centered around three young kids who are living behind this wall and just trying to survive. I could go further into what that's about, but... Uh, I kind of don't want to go too much into detail, plus it's a lot of explaining, but that's kind of the gist of the story. Amazing, amazing story. It was really, really hard for me to choose whether this would be number one or number two, but I made it number two. So anyways, yes, Attack on Titan. And what would you think would be better than Attack on Titan? It's not that I think this one's better than Attack on Titan, which is why it went in between being number one and number two. It's just that I am currently obsessed with this story not only reading it, but watching it on Crunchyroll, and that is Parasite by Hitoshi Iwaki. And this is such a good show. I love shows that have like weird phenomena mysteries behind it that have no really 
no clue or answer behind them. So this is essentially what it is called. These things come down from the sky and they don't we don't know if they're aliens or if they were created on earth or by man or by nature, what, but they are parasites that try to get into your brain and basically eat it and take over your body. After which they can bas they can transform their heads into like giant it's really gross. I can't really explain it. Let me just show you a picture. They can transform their head after that and they're cannibals, so if they go into a human, they eat other humans to survive. This is centered around a boy who was sleeping when a parasite tried to take over his body, but he gets woken up in the middle of it, and something happens, and it goes into his hand to try to reach his brain, and he cuts the circulation from his arm with headphone cords, and which stops the parasite from reaching his brain. Essentially what happened is the parasite matures in his arm and can no longer get to his head, so it now is permanently stuck in his hand. So his hand can do all the same things, can transform and is a living parasite at this point, but it can no longer take over his body. And it's essentially his crazy journey through finding out what the hell parasites are and how to get rid of them. He finds that he needs to save people from parasites since he's essentially the only one who knows the truth behind all of this. And so he goes on this crazy wild journey. I love it. This is an, this is such a good story. I've watched all of the anime. I think there's 11 episodes right now. There's a 12th episode coming out in like three days or so. And then I own all eight volumes. I think there's only eight volumes total, but I own all of the ones that I know are out and I've read the first four. So I am definitely going to be reading the next four here soon. Very, very, very soon. But anyways, this is my number one spot please go read this. Then there are just a couple of honorable mentions that I wanted to mention in this video that aren't really part of my top five. I just kind of really wanted to talk about them. The first one being Sailor Moon by Naoko Takeuchi. This actually was a first time read for me in 2014, although it is not a new series, definitely not. This is a show that I used to watch when I was little, but as far as reading it, this was the first time. So, not the best story, trust me. It was more like the nostalgic feeling for it, which is why I felt like mentioning it on here. Sailor Moon is very, very, very widely known. Everybody loves Sailor Moon. If you like that kind of story and you liked the anime but haven't picked up the manga, I suggest picking up the manga, actually. Between the two, I found it a better medium for me, but that could be just because I'm a reader. And then I thought I would just mention a more obscure manga that I haven't really heard anybody talk about, although I got this back in the summertime and I did mention it in one video, and that is Limit by Keiko Suenobu. This is a survival story, essentially. A class of high school students are, I can't remember whether they're coming back or going to a class field trip when their bus crashes and everyone dies with the exception of a couple of students. They all have very different personalities, very different social classes I guess you could say, like popularity group, the, the geeky person, the, the kind of standoffish person, uh, the jock, stuff like that. It's a really really deep storyline behind it because it's essentially saying when what would you do in this situation would you be able to put aside your feelings of wanting to just take care of yourself or would you be able to work with other people whom you don't necessarily get along with and be able to survive that way or would you just not care about them at all because you're not friends you don't actually care whether they live or die you just want to take care of yourself. What would you do? And that was really, really empowering, I thought. I've read the first three volumes. I think there's like six volumes of this, so I do plan on getting the rest. Um, it's just not on the top of my list, but I did really enjoy it, and that is why I mentioned it in this video. Check it out if that's something that interests you. It's really, really good. So that is all for my top five manga that I read in 2014. What manga did you all enjoy in 2014? Leave comments down below. Let me know. I do have other videos planned, trust me guys. I have a gigantic, gigantic Christmas book haul. You have no idea. I'm probably going to have to split up the novels and the manga in a, 
like two separate videos because I probably got like 20 new manga in the course of a month. I know, I know, it's gonna be awesome. Also, I will be doing my December wrap up video, but it's gonna be a little bit later and when I have more time, I've been really busy um, coming down from all the hype of December and Christmas and stuff and my birthday's coming up at the end of this month so I have a lot of prep to do for that. Not only that, but my family has a lot of January birthdays. My sister and my nephew also have birthdays in January as well as my twin brother who shares my birthday. So um, we have that and so yes, I will definitely try to get to doing another video here soon and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!